Did you know that in After Effects you can isolate the red, green, and blue channels in the comp viewer to help you isolate color matching problems? This is super helpful if you are ever doing any sort of compositing. If you've ever wondered what this red, green, and blue button is at the bottom of the comp viewer, but have not been curious enough to click it and find out, well, we're going to find out. This button brings up a menu that allows you to choose how you are viewing your image in RGB, which is just your regular looking at an image with your red, green, and blue channels mixed, or you can isolate red, and it's giving you a nice little handy visual indicator here at the top and bottom that that's the channel you're viewing, green, or blue, as a black and white image representing the blue luminance values. And you can view these channels with a hotkey on a Mac. It's option one to bring up red. And if you hit that same hotkey again, it toggles back and forth to your normal view. Option two for green, option three for blue. On Windows, I'm assuming that's alt one, two, and three. So when is this useful? For me, it's primarily in compositing. For example, here I have a photo and I've created a mask, but I want to composite in a new sky. I've just taken this other photo from another city taken at a similar time of day, kind of a sunset. And so I've got my composite here. I've got a foreground and a background plate, but it doesn't look quite right. I want to expose more for this situation of the, uh, the sunset, which means the background should probably end up looking significantly darker than it does here. So that's our first clue as to why things look wrong. These, uh, these blue mountains seem very bright. They seem unnaturally bright to me. So I've got a couple of those are my two main clues is that the, the scene as a whole feels a little too bright and the mountains in, in the background particularly are an unnatural luminance and kind of an unnatural color. So I'm going to drop a levels effect on my foreground here. And because I'll be making color adjustments between the foreground and background, this, this pink mask is going to get really distracting. So I'm going to select our toggle mask view here and the mask disappears. Okay, so to the levels effect, it's a good idea to begin in RGB mode, just your regular mode, trying to bring the brightness into a place that looks a bit more natural. And like I said, it'll probably be pretty dark to match the, uh, the original plate. So we can accomplish that by adjusting the gamma here. This middle point on the histogram will pull that up. And because we've got pretty bright highlights here in the background still, I'm going to pull down our output white a fair amount. Maybe I'll go a little more conservative on that up front. This is already starting to look pretty good. Now we can go in channel by channel and make little adjustments on top of our blanket RGB adjustments. So let's go to our red channel and then option one to isolate the red. Things are looking pretty good here. I think we can move on to green option two. Also looking pretty good. Make sure that you select the, the green channel that you're working with to match the view. Maybe pull some things around, see if it improves the overall look. I might pull the output white up, down just a little bit. In full color, the mountains are very blue. There's our probably biggest problem. And if we zoom in on this area, you can see that the, the mountains are brighter than the clouds, which is fairly unnatural, especially after the sun has gone down. In the effect, make sure you're in the blue channel to darken this mountain below the brightness of the clouds. It's mostly just a, an output white adjustment. Drag that slider down, 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 down. Now we've got them about equal and I'm okay with that. Back to full color view and that is not looking too bad. And you can continue to make adjustments in the full color view to a single channel and see what that is actually doing. If I pull the gamma up, things turn very green. And if I push it back, then things turn very magenta purple. So I want, I want to find a nice balance where things feel pretty natural. This is pretty balanced right here. Now let's, let's take a look at each color channel once more. The value of isolating color channels for compositing is that you can verify that each of the three channels looks correct. If any of them are really glaringly bad, you've got a problem. And isolating which channel is the problem can be really helpful in knowing how to fix it. In this case, blue was pretty glaringly bad. Green and red, not so much. They looked all right, but blue was definitely our problem child. So here is our before and after. Probably still some room to, uh, to work around. I'm gonna play with our red levels here. Kind of cool that down. Yeah, the parking lot was looking pretty magenta to me. So again, option one, two, three, RGB. Can you see? Anything wrong with this picture? 
And that is the magic of isolating your color channels. This is particularly helpful with green screens when you're matching an actor shot in front of a green screen over a background shot completely separately. There will likely be a need to make some color adjustments and the ability to isolate each color channel as you are making adjustments to that specific channel makes the color matching process quicker and more precise. So here we can enjoy the final frame for a few seconds while I ask you to subscribe to my channel and you decide whether you're, you're going to do that or not.